this is the beginning of uh, the second day of our plenary um, and uh, we start today with our uh, very interesting uh, high-level debate on cohesion and implementation with uh, Elisa Ferreira, the Commissioner for Cohesion and Reforms, and Liliana Pavlova, the Vice President of the European Investment Bank. But before we resume our work, I want to inform you that there will be two voting sessions of opinions and amendments today. The first one is scheduled from 11.40 to 11.55 uh, Brussels time, and the second one from 4.50 to 5.35 p.m. Brussels time. Please ensure that uh, you are connected for these times uh, and ready to vote uh, by then. So, we start our day, as I said, with uh, this high-level uh, debate, and I have the pleasure to welcome with us for this debate Ms. Elisa Ferreira, Commissioner for Cohesion Reforms, and Ms. Liliana Pavlova, the Vice President of the European Investment Bank. Thank you both for accepting our invitation. And um, I would say that, dear Commissioner, dear Vice President, dear colleagues, it is a real pleasure to have you uh, with us today. Once again, the health situation forces us to meet online. Nonetheless, our willingness and capacity to cooperate not only are stronger than this pandemic, but have been even intensified by the awareness of the difficulties on the ground in our regions and our cities. We share the huge responsibility of turning the financial resources made available by the EU budget into concrete projects and actions that will make our citizens feel more protected and better connected. Now, these investments are not simple figures on our dashboards. Every community must be able to benefit from and contribute to an EU-wide mobilization aimed at securing an inclusive recovery, shared prosperity and sustainability. By 2023, we must complete the 2014-2020 cohesion policy programs, and by the next few months, we will need to launch the 2021-2027 investment plans. So we have two tasks ahead of us. And we must succeed on these two fronts, securing an efficient coordination with the Recovery and Resilience Facility, to which regions and cities are contributing in a decisive manner. Now, the European Committee of Regions, the European Commission and the European Investment Bank are indeed determined to face these challenges working side by side stepping up efforts to support fund managers on the ground, monitor the situation and remove obstacles to an impactful implementation of investments. Europe's regions, cities and villages have already started their transition to a greener and a digitalized future. The implementation and the timely delivery of cohesion policy for 21-27 in the spirit of genuine partnership and in synergy with other instruments, will be decisive to ensure that such transitions will be inclusive, fair and, of course, successful. The joint action plan that we have signed with Commissioner Ferreira two days ago, and I wish to warmly thank her for her commitment and closeness, goes exactly in this direction. Strengthening cooperation to seize together the historic opportunity of a balanced recovery. Now, this same, these same priorities are shaping our excellent cooperation with the EIB, aimed at facilitating the access to funding opportunities by regional and local authorities. And I really want to thank Vice President Pavlova for her participation today and for helping us to better understand the European Investment Bank's approach to the new cohesion programming phase. Finally, I wish to thank the representatives of the Partner Association in the Cohesion Alliance. Our joint efforts contributed to secure a strong cohesion policy over the next decade. And we will keep working together 
to make sure that cohesion values and multi-level governance remain the engine of all EU's development policies and that decision makers at all levels are aware of cohesion policy's key role in tackling the future challenges of our Union. Now, this plenary debate opens in the best possible way our 2022 joint work on cohesion policy. The summit, organized by the Committee of Regions and the French Presidency of the EU in Marseille in March, as well as the cohesion forum promoted by the European Commission, will definitely provide to further and outstanding opportunities in order to take stock, if you want, of the implementation of this crucial policy on the ground, as well as of its contribution to finally relaunching successfully our Europe. So, dear Commissioner, dear Elisa, the floor is yours. Commissioner Ferreira, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, dear, Hello, uh, dear President Tsikostas, uh, dear Apostolos, uh, dear Vice President uh, Pavlova, dear Liliana, honorable members, dear colleagues, as you know, and as uh, you just mentioned, we have been working very hard together but uh, very professionally and very efficiently. And uh, as you also know, in early February, we will publish the eighth cohesion report on the state of Europe's regions and cities. This report analyzes cohesion policy's contribution to convergence over the last decades. I also analyze it also analyzes our contribution during the crisis. And I recall that uh, during the crisis, cohesion policy was in certain member states. It represented more than half of total public investment. And it analyzes also the contribution of cohesion policy to the long-term recovery. So not only in the crisis, but as a long-term instrument, that's what it is. Also including a green transition that has got to cover all regions and to actually avoid also a digital divide, and that's a risk. It is clear, as you just said it, uh, it is clear that Europe needs cohesion policy and on top of it, or at the core of it, the effective implementation of this cohesion policy. We need cohesion as a value of the European construction. We need cohesion also as an enabler of the recovery and of these uh, twin transitions, the green and the digital. And we need cohesion also as a leveler to guarantee that we keep moving forward, but that we do it together. So thank you very much sincerely for this timely discussion on the implementation of cohesion, especially as we are looking to finish the old programs and start the new. And this is quite a challenge. Trying to streamline my, my thinking, I will make most, basically three points. In the first one, I will outline the state of play of the old 2014 programs. Sometimes we tend to forget them. Second, I will review very, in a very synthetic way the progress on the new 2021 programs and future-oriented. And third, I will outline our common work as a Commission and Committee of the Regions, the work to tackle the challenges in both periods and um, lay together the foundations for success. So in relation to the implementation of the 2014 programs, 
we can say that uh, it is progressing well, uh, given also the unprecedented circumstances we had to face. So far, and the, the, the figures I'm, I'm sharing with you uh, relate to the 13th of January, so a couple of days ago, the Commission has paid out 253 billion euros, uh, and this equals to 62% of the planned funds. Uh, these figures include REACT-EU, which, as you all know, was uh, the first instrument uh, to be financed by Next Generation EU, by the new borrowing. Uh, and the first use of this money was, in fact, in REACT-EU, in reinforcing the previous um, cohesion uh, funds. The Commission has already approved 99.3% of the 2021 tranche of this instrument of react you And we have already approved 20 program amendments for the 2022 tranche, for the next tranche. We expect to adopt all the necessary amendments in the first half of uh, 2022, so, so of this year. So until June, we hope to have all the, the amendments approved. We in the Commission have spared, in fact, no efforts to ensure the fastest possible reaction to the crisis. And as we know, uh, we have been speedy since the beginning, uh, being among, in fact, the first responders to the crisis. And we are determined to see this through to the very end, to keep the same uh, energy and same uh, capacity to respond. In fact, we recognize that extraordinary efforts will be required in 2022 and 2023 to invest, on one hand, the remaining 38% of the programs, what remains from 2014-2020, and consequently avoid the cutoff. Um, cohesion investment is, in fact, and we we all know it, desperately needed, and we must avoid any loss. And that it will be a particular challenge to deliver these investments at the same time, and we are very much aware of this, as uh, recovery and resilience investments. And on the other hand, the preparation of the new cohesion programs. The unprecedented amount of funding is in fact a great opportunity, but also a great responsibility to make the European Union investments that bring, to make these investments bring real value and positive change on the ground. This is also the time to show cohesion policy as a driver of, of a convergence that includes modernization, that supports the green and the digital transitions and social progress. So this is, in a nutshell, uh, the state of the art of the past funds. Now looking at the future and in particular at the, the what I called my second point, progress in preparing the new period. Since the legislative package in 2018, the Commission has been cooperating intensively with Member States to prepare the new period. In fact, 23% uh, of uh, investment for growth and jobs programmes have already been submitted. Here I'm talking about number of programmes. Uh, so 66 out of 293. Delays were understandable. Uh, in the crisis of 2020, even uh, prolonged in 2021, but now it is time. It is time to get the new programs up and running. In fact, all programs must be adopted during this year of 2022, uh, because the 2021 allocation will be split in the following years, but the 2022 allocation will be lost if it is not used. So I call your attention on this. I can only urge uh, the member states that have not yet done so to submit their programs as soon as possible. However, 
I have also been clear in saying that speed cannot replace substance. So also from our side, we are taking some time to discuss the details of these programs as they will shape our common future and the future of our regions for a decade. So it's a long-term strategic view that we need. In fact, um, you know the challenges, the challenge of delivering a green and digital transition, which in fact brings everybody together and in, in practice leaves no region behind. The challenge of maximizing synergies and coordination with, between the different instruments, in particular with the new recovery and resilience facility. And the challenge of protecting specific areas such as our rural areas uh, and, uh, and other regions in transition, for instance, like the Just Transition Fund areas. And this is why we must get it quickly, but we must get it right. The Committee of the Regions is the first European institution to adopt its opinion on the long-term vision for Europe's rural areas. And I thank you, all of you, for the timeliness quality and, and, and the seriousness of the work you have done. The vision provides an ambition, ambitious yet a very realistic view of how we want our rural areas to look in 2040 and how to work with local authorities, local people to deliver this. And with this, I go into my third point, and uh, in cohesion policy and in any development policy, local partners are the secret ingredient. Uh, the, they are the key of success. They are the, the true success factor. So it is absolutely crucial, and I call your engagement on this, to involve the relevant local partners and to build, to help them to build their own capacity. Earlier this week, and you just mentioned it, President Sitsi Costas, Together with President Sitsi Costas and Cotter Chair, uh, Ms. Uh, Sarah Bezoles, we launched what we call the joint action plan between this committee and the Commission. We have set five priority areas, including the monitoring of the application of the partnership principle and ensuring effective engagement of local and regional authorities in the new programs. We know that partnership must be enhanced. And there is a lot of variance between member states. For this reason, we in the Commission have recently launched the European Community of Practice on Partnership, exactly to exchange best practices, to discuss the functioning of, uh, of the Code of Conduct, and to prepare the ground for the update of the Code before the next programming period. And for this, we need your contribution, your suggestions, and uh, your balance on how things have worked and what we need to improve. I and my services take the partnership principle very, very seriously. We will keep monitoring to ensure that partners are included and that they benefit to the full from the new provisions and resources uh, to build their capacity. We are also concerned to promote partnership and involvement of regional and local authorities in the new recovery and resilience facility. Annual stakeholder events are proposed for each member state, a platform to gather feedback and to exchange views on implementation of key reforms and of investments. I urge you all to be proactive in these forums or for uh, promoting the best possible interplay between cohesion policy and the RRF. Let me just note a uh, detail that is not a detail, the technical support instrument. It is really a powerful instrument, a powerful tool to help build better public administrations, implement growth financing reforms, and make the most of investments, including cohesion policy and the RRF. This instrument is available to national, but also to regional and local administrations. And no administration is alone 
in making reforms. If you want to do it and you need technical support, we are here to help, uh, of course, with limited means, but uh, uh, we have been able to answer, uh, I mean, to requests from all member states. And this is quite an important tool in terms of quality. Dear colleagues, uh, I would like to close by remembering our mission. Whatever the challenge, whatever the change, from green transition to digital revolution, from demographic changes to division for rural areas, cohesion policy is there to ensure that all regions benefit fully and, in fact, that we don't split Europe in regions that progress and grow and regions that decline or remain for decades in a stagnant kind of situation. So it is crucial, first, to redouble our efforts to invest the final trenches and to invest them right of the 2014 programme, so that uh, none of the investment is lost. Second, to accelerate the preparation of the 2021 programmes. Third, to build solid partnerships and through capacity building, solid, engaged, competent partners. This is our joint work. A work not just of democratic accountability, but of policy effective effectiveness. And this is, in fact, our joint action plan. This is what we signed this week. And this will be our common task for the coming years to reinforce cohesion as a basic principle of European Union in our common European house, as an enabler of the future we want to build, and as a leveler to make sure that all citizens, wherever they were born, will share this very, very positive journey. Thank you and I look forward to our discussion today. Thank you once again. Thank you very, very much, uh, Commissioner. It's been a pleasure to see you again today. And uh, I really want to underline the importance of this very good collaboration that we have together, the Committee of Regions and the European Commission, and uh, especially with you and uh, the way that uh, we have been moving things forward, uh, especially during these very, very difficult times. So thank you again very much. Uh, and uh, I would like to give the floor now to the Vice President of the EID, uh, Ms. Pavlova. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good morning, dear President Tsitsikostas, dear Apostolos, dear Commissioner Ferreira, dear Elisa, honorable members of the European Committee of the Regions, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. Um, it is really a real pleasure for me and honor to participate in today's uh, high-level debate on cohesion implementation. Unfortunately, only virtual this time, but I'm really hopeful that uh, we will be able to meet soon in person. Uh, we at the European Investment Bank, at the European Investment Bank Group, uh, really value your institution as, uh, as a constant and as a close ally of supporting together cohesion objectives on local and regional level. And we are always ready and delighted uh, to, to contribute uh, to your debates uh, with our pan-European uh, expertise of financial markets and uh, successful project uh, delivery, as well as our technical and advisory support. The current economic recovery situation is indeed difficult. Uh, as your background paper for this session rightly point out so too. Uh, we also see the Caesar's effect of combined falling revenues and rising expenditures throughout Europe. Although EU has tried uh, significantly to, to damper this effect with unprecedented amount of grant and loan resources provided, as already Commissioner Ferreira mentioned, from next generation EU, and in addition to to the traditional budget of uh, cohesion policy funds, unfortunately, still we see that there is a significant uh, funding gap which remains in the investment budget of uh, many uh, local and regional authorities, even in some national authorities as well. 
So against this uh, backstop in the new cohesion orientation paper of the European Investment Bank, uh, which, is, which I believe is, is particularly relevant, uh, and this was the aim of, uh, of uh, developing this very specific dedicated strategic document of the bank, which was approved uh, recently by our board, is really to serve as our new guidance on how to achieve even more cohesion and how to provide even more targeted and tailor-made support for our partners, for regional and local authorities, for national authorities as well, for all our stakeholders, for our financing, for our mandate management and financial instruments, as well as with our advisory support. In the previous programming period uh, till 2020, we have uh, done a, a lot in supporting achieving uh, cohesion policy goals. Uh, I, I take a note of Commissioner Ferreira note that we mentioned that last effort now is needed to successfully uh, complete and finalize the implementation of the, the, the previous programming period projects and programs where we have provided our support for co-financing, advisory, and financial instruments. Um, and I, had, I could say here that, uh, as you remember, we promised and we delivered uh, on this promise in devoting even more of our overall annual financing to cohesion volumes. So, and we reached 30% of our overall uh, lending to be dedicated in, the, in support of cohesion, uh, cohesion regions. In the last five years, uh, the, the bank provided more than 90 billion, 90.8 billion euro in projects supporting cohesion in, in the regions. Last year alone, uh, the amount of, uh, of our investments and operations signed uh, within our cohesion uh, priority objective is, uh, is almost 20 billion, 19.8 billion euro, which is equivalent of more than 40% of our uh, lending and operations in EU. So we believe that through this increased support, we, we really provided the, the much, uh, much needed uh, financing to boost the economies of, of cohesion countries. In the short run, the level of GDP in cohesion regions is estimated to be 2% higher than in the counterfactual situation without uh, us uh, supporting the operations and projects. Even after 20 years, uh, regional GDP in cohesion regions is estimated to be still 0.9% higher without EAB support, supporting and co-financing operations. This means that our financing can make a real difference. However, our financing, unfortunately, is not unlimited. For this reason, we have, uh, in our drafting process of, of the cohesion orientation paper, thought very hard about what are the priorities for 2021-27, how to, to streamline these priorities in support of the overall EU objectives and cohesion policy. Policy and we discussed uh, this uh, our draft paper, our uh, priorities with all our key institutional partners, with DG Region, the European Commission, with the Parliament, and of course with you, Committee of the Region, our very important partner in this process. And as you remember, the main question was where we should focus more our financing and support in the future. And the answer is simple and compelling at the same time. We have to concentrate our efforts and uh, where we can make the biggest difference and where we can provide the largest added value. Uh, and it seems like it was also the result of the, 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 of the debate we had with you that we have to focus more on less developed regions. As obvious, uh, less developed regions have more needs and they have really further to go to, to reach the, the living conditions and the, the, the basic infrastructure levels to the average of, of the EU. Uh, so as European Investment Bank, we, we try to support them on the path to convergence. For this, uh, uh, we've been working to understand better regional needs, 
for investments as well as for, for technical and advisory support. Uh, drawing on our uh, unique experience on one side, but also uh, drawing on the results of our recent two uh, economic surveys by our economic team. Uh, service analyzing uh, the, the needs and the requests of co corporates and with a special focus on European municipalities, local and regional authorities. And our analysis is showing that the investment uh, and the technical capacity gaps remain considerable and often, and often limiting um, uh, opportunities of companies, of businesses and of people in less uh, developed regions. So we now understand that uh, uh, better how uh, investment needs and gaps can be addressed. And this, uh, this varies across the regions and uh, therefore we need to do more. So as a consequence, we have um, created a, a new additional, a new target of our financing. So uh, which, uh, which is uh, now covering specifically res less developed regions. So far, it was approximately 20%. And now we will be uh, gradually increasing this lending and this uh, reaching the target of 23% of our financing to be dedicated to less developed regions. Of course, at the same time, we won't uh, neglect transition regions with their specific needs, because otherwise they could uh, too fall into the middle income trap and become less developed regions of tomorrow. Thus, we also uh, raised our overall ambition for cohesion financing across both transition and less developed region. So far, it was 30%. Already last year, we reached 40% increase, and our ambition is to, to increase our cohesion lending to reach 45% of our overall lending by 2025. For us, this is ambitious, but at the same time, I believe it's a very realistic goal. So now our new cohesion orientation paper uh, sets also not only quantitative, quantitative, but also qualitative targets. We will, uh, uh, we will do more for greener cohesion projects. This is one of the very important targets because supporting cohesion objectives and climate goals, it, it should go hand in hand. Uh, and for us, it's not only possible, but it is really indispensable if we want to achieve and to support the transition to, to a better, a cleaner future across EU. Uh, therefore, it's even not a restriction, but we feel that cohesion, uh, the cohesion regions and our cohesion targets could be reinforcing each other with the other transversal objective of EIB as a climate bank, which is also our, uh, increasing our uh, climate-related investments by 2025 to reach uh, 50 percent of our lending. Of course, with special focus and special attention, ensuring and supporting just and fair transition of, of regions. Um, another important element of our, of our strategy and our uh, specific uh, targets is, of course, to support and to facilitate innovation. Innovation investments with special focus on in less developed regions, because we want to help to disseminate modern technologies and innovation in less developed regions. Uh, and this, is, this means that especially mid-sized companies uh, could count on our support in uh, deploying proven technologies, some kind of diffusion of proven technologies uh, to, be, to be deployed in regions, in countries, in countries uh, for a first time. So uh, in order that, of course, provided that that investment creates local economic spillovers, which is a very important, and of course, hopefully, as well, environmental co-benefits. We will also make it easier for medium-sized companies, since they are actually the backbone of the, of the European and the local economy in the regions, to access our financing. So now, from now on, so far, we will providing their support for the medium-sized companies only through our intermediated lending, through our financial intermediaries. From now on, the medium-sized companies will be able 
to uh, to uh, to reach and to to be supported with direct direct support and lending. So now we will be providing uh, this this special support, direct support to SMEs and mid caps, uh, with with special with special attention to mid sized companies in less developed regions, which will benefit of our direct financing in the in the scale of. Uh, of, of the threshold of up to 100 million uh, euro investment project. We will also increase further our support in making an efficient and policy driven use of, uh, of EU funds uh, and the resources through our so called mandate management, for, meaning finance deployment and uh, establishing of financial instruments, both by the bank and by, by our sub subsidiary, the European Investment Fund in setting up and implement, implementing bilateral financial instruments on behalf of the member states and regions in supporting the, the private sector and attracting more private financing as well. And last but not least, we will increase our advisory offer for cohesion regions because we see that successful projects can only be realized where the needed capacity and technical knowledge is present. Building on our well-established uh, technical advisory services like Jaspers, Elena, and our country-specific project advisory support teams, so-called PASA teams in the regions, and with additional support envisaged now in the new InvestEU advisory hub, we, we plan to intensify our efforts and our support to improve the project preparation because it's critical for the successful implementation uh, of all funds uh, available and to support uh, local authorities in strengthening their administrative capacity. Of course, we will provide additional financial advisory support to help to design and to implement financial instruments and different investment platforms centrally, but also in the regions. We have noted well your plea in the background paper for this debate that financial instruments should be made simpler and should be aligned with the economic conditions of the, of the relevant market, something which we can, of course, fully agree with and which we are trying really to do and to improve also through uh, the support of our advisory uh, support packages like PyCompass. Uh, we believe that the new legislative framework for the period till 27, uh, of course, should help us uh, even more. Having simpler and clear um, legislation will enable us really when establishing financial instrument and exploring new possibilities. Uh, and for example, the, a good example here is uh, now we have the opportunity of better combination of grants and loans. So ladies and gentlemen, when you look in all these features of our new uh, EIB group cohesion orientation paper, uh, you can see that uh, we have tried and we have now committed ourselves to strengthen substantially our cohesion mission, a mission which has always